Hey, what's up guys, Rick here. So today we're gonna be once again talking about Assassin's Creed Shadows and Ubisoft because we have some very stunning developments to cover, including this post right here. So I was originally gonna talk about Assassin's Creed Shadows for other reasons that we'll cover later in this video, but just before recording, this dropped from the official Assassin's Creed account saying this, the Assassin's Creed Shadows team has a message for our Japanese community who is very upset about many different aspects of this game as well as some decisions made by Ubisoft. And this honestly felt like a present because today is my birthday. And to celebrate my birthday, Ooh Market has gone crazy, okay? You can see the merch right here. They really went above and beyond for this summer merch drop right here. As you can see, we have a brand new summer poster, a jet tag keychain, a new limited edition collectible double XL mouse pad available until fall of 2024, including an LED version option if you like that as well, and a mini rev docky keychain available for only one month as a pre-order. So yeah, there is a lot to check out there. It's, it's a banger. I mean, what else can you say? So I'll put all the relevant information in the links in the description and the pinned comment. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. So let's move back to the topic for today, Assassin's Creed Shadows. So this is developed by Ubisoft, who is being hit real hard. If you look at their stock, it has been taking a big tumble over the past couple of days, which is odd because they recently released their financial reports and things seemed pretty good for the previous quarter. And they also said they had positive net bookings and strong guidance. So why is the stock dropping? Well, it has to do with some comments made during these events where basically Ubisoft is trying to put all their money on Assassin's Creed Shadows and they're claiming that a lot of the promise of this game is surrounding the community reaction to this game. Bad choice of words. The gameplay for our two highly anticipated upcoming premium titles, Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows, was not only praised by players and critics alike, but also highlighted the cutting edge capabilities of our game engine. Could you talk about pre-orders for both Outlaws and, and Shadows and how they compare to previous titles? So in terms of, um, um, we, uh, we don't disclose nor comment uh, pre-orders usually. What we can say is that uh, what we've been observing and measuring uh, is that uh, our two uh, big titles actually are indeed uh, among the most awaited uh, games of the, of the industry and they uh, enjoy a very strong positive community sentiment overall. So yeah, it's not surprising that a lot of investors are very worried about this game because its success is being tied to the community reaction and the community reaction to Assassin's Creed Shadows and Ubisoft is absolutely abysmal right now. Not just on the English side, but primarily on the Japanese market that is the center of this game. This is the setting of Assassin's Creed Shadows and it is being very heavily criticized. I mean, we've seen all the trailers and promotional videos for this game getting review bombed and dislike bombed, whether it's on the English release or the Japanese release. We've seen a merch scandal through Ubisoft who basically they, they got caught purchasing items off of Amazon and then trying to repurpose them for their own unique limited edition Assassin's Creed Shadows artwork or merchandise. And then on top of that, we have a petition from the Japanese side of gamers that has over 100,000 signatures rallying against this game, trying to shut it down. We've also seen political action in the works because of the historical inaccuracies being reinforced by this game. But the main thing that everyone is talking about is the fact that they chose Yasuke and labeled him as a samurai. Until only recent weeks, it was pretty unanimous that he was not a samurai, he was a retainer. However, that narrative has been challenged by people with no evidence. We first saw this with this individual right here. So this person and their video went viral on social media where this guy claimed that Yasuke was a samurai and everyone was sharing this saying anyone questioning the choice of Yasuke as the main character or the label of a samurai are wrong because this guy says otherwise. Well, he had no proof by the way. And on top of that, it was discovered by Japanese users that this guy wasn't a historian. He was a waiter at a restaurant. He was basically just a Japanese guy wearing a kimono. And people in the West said, ha ha, he must be an expert on Japanese culture. So after that, people moved to Thomas Lockley. This is an absolute disaster. And it's been going unfolding over the past couple of days. He has made a book called Yasuke, the true story of the legendary African samurai. 
On various accounts tied to Lockley, he has been caught vandalizing the Wikipedia page of Yasuke for years. He has intentionally removed sources that support the narrative that he was simply a retainer and promoted his own work in place of it. Basically, a giant scam to promote his book, and now he is labeled by many as the expert on Yasuke. However, many Japanese users are infuriated as they have discovered this book recently that makes many false claims, including the claim that African slaves were popular in Japan. Yeah, imagine this guy rewriting your history for some ridiculous book he is trying to sell and now being labeled as an expert of your culture. It is ridiculous. And he is now actually under investigation by the university he works at because of how badly this book is being criticized. And on top of that, there is, like I mentioned earlier, some movement in the politicians of Japan who are looking into this book and this individual and the damage it is causing with its re revised history of Japan. And now we move on to the latest candidate trying to promote this Yasuke Samurai narrative. We have this individual named Hirayama Kentaro. Now, he was shared in this viral post from Culture Crave where they say Japanese historian Yu Hirayama says that Yasuke was a samurai. Now, you'll notice in this post and all of the related posts from that historian that there is no evidence. There's no evidence. It's all speculation. And yet this post went viral because people thought this was an own against people who were challenging the narrative that Yasuke was a samurai when the historical evidence supports that he was a retainer. And people like this are saying you're racist for challenging that in the process calling a great number of people from Japan racist for questioning these unfounded claims about Yasuke. And here is a post from Hirayama. He makes his claims here. And again, you'll notice, just like every other, there's no actual evidence of anything to support his claims. In fact, people started digging into this man and what he's all about. Turns out he is a supporter of the Japanese Communist Party. Uh, that's not a very good start. On top of that, he ascribes himself to the Marxist histiography philosophy. Basically, this type of historical approach does not require empirical evidence. Basically, if it feels like it happened, that means it happened. Yeah, speculation. That is kind of the theme going on in this video. And you can see also some of his biggest critics have gone very hard on Hirayama, basically claiming that he has no bearing in reality with his claims. And on top of that, even his supporters are starting to admit that all of this is just speculation. That is the best argument they can have to support the claim that Yasuke was a samurai. Well, that has all led to this. There has been so much outrage on social media, primarily from Japanese users. Despite whatever Western Twitter users will claim, a lot of people from Japan are really, really angry at Assassin's Creed Shadows, Ubisoft, and also these people trying to make these claims about Yasuke. So they released this statement earlier today saying, the Assassin's Creed Shadows team has a message for our Japanese community. By the way, this is what damage control looks like, ladies and gentlemen, but let's read the statement. So one out of four here. To our esteemed Japanese community, a message from the Assassin's Creed Shadows development team. First, we want to express our heartfelt thanks for all of your support for the Assassin's Creed series, which is now, it's, uh, has its own history spanning almost 20 years. Over this time, we have explored various settings, time periods, and characters from Assassin during the Third Crusade to a Viking in 9th century England and countless more. For many of our team, creating an Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan has been a long cherished dream. Since the announcement of Assassin's Creed Shadows, we have received many positive reactions, but also some criticism, including from you, our Japanese players. We share our passion for history and deeply respect your care for the historical and cultural integrity of your rich heritage. We would like to address a few points to clarify our intentions and creative decisions. Overall authenticity efforts. We have put significant effort into ensuring an immersive and respectful representation of feudal Japan. However, our intention has never been to present any of our Assassin's Creed games, including Assassin's Creed Shadows, as a factual representation of history or historical characters or historical characters. Instead, we aim to spark curiosity and encourage players 
to explore and learn more about the historical settings we get inspired by. Assassin's Creed Shadows is first and foremost designed to be an entertaining video game that tells our com a compelling historical fiction set in feudal Japan. Our team extensively collaborated with external consultants, historians, researchers, and internal teams at Ubisoft Japan to inform our creative choices. Despite these sustained efforts, we acknowledge that some elements in our promotional materials have caused concern within the Japanese community. For this, we sincerely apologize. All game footage presented so far is in development and the game will keep evolving until launch. Based on the constructive criticism we have received, we will continue our efforts until we put this game into your hands and beyond. We also want to clarify that while we have been consulting with many people throughout the development process, there are no, there are in no way responsible for the decisions that are taken by the creative teams in the interest of gameplay and entertainment. Consequently, we respectfully request that all that any criticism not directed at our collaborators, both internal and external, creative liberties and historical interpretations. While we strive for authenticity in everything that we do, Assassin's Creed games are works of fiction inspired by real historical events and figures. From its inception, the series has taken creative license and incorporated fantasy elements to craft engaging and immersive experiences. The representation of Yasuke in our game is an illustration of this. His unique and mysterious life made him an ideal candidate to tell an Assassin's Creed story with the setting of feudal Japan as a backdrop. While Yasuke is depicted as a samurai in Assassin's Creed Shadows, we acknowledge that this is a matter of debate and discussion. We have woven this carefully into our narrative with our other lead character, the Japanese shinobi, Naoe, who is equally important in the game. Our dual protagonists provide players with different gameplay styles. We greatly value your feedback and encourage you to continue sharing your thoughts respectfully. While we understand that meeting everyone's expectations is very difficult, we sincerely hope that when Assassin's Creed Shadows launches on November 15th, players in Japan and around the world will appreciate the dedication, effort, and passion we have poured into it. The Assassin's Creed Shadows development team. Now, this is damage control, like I said. So they are trying to take the stance that they don't make any sort of claims that their games are historically accurate, but that's a problem because this is hinged upon Yasuke being a samurai and the debates that have sparked from this has literally rewritten Japanese history and I think this game and its development team have relied on that and because these claims that Yasuke is a samurai is being greatly challenged and refuted particularly by Japanese gamers it's backfiring really really badly and this is their appeal to try to salvage this mess because I think they've realized how bad the optics of this game is right now, and they are worried this is going to tank very, very hard, and this is their most desperate move yet. And also, this counters a lot of the people who are trying to support this game by claiming Yasuke is a samurai and all of the people challenging it are a bunch of annoying gamers. Well, they look pretty stupid now because they were backing this game as development team who now said, well, this is all up for debate and we don't have any sort of historical accuracy in our games. But anyways, one of the main things and main responses to this post, at least the English one, is a lot of people are saying, oh, well, Japan doesn't care. This is just a bunch of people, English speakers, who are mad about this. You should go and see the Japanese version of this post. It has more quote retweets than likes. It is getting absolutely bombed. If you think the people on the English side are mocking Ubisoft right now, see it on the Japanese side. Go through the quotes, translate them. It is absolutely insane how mad people are at Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed Shadows. This, to me, is a very desperate move that is backfiring. This is even worse optics for Ubisoft in this game, and I think things are going to get even worse because Japanese gamers and just Japanese users in general are tired of these woke companies trying to rewrite their history and shove this stuff down their throat. They are finally starting to fight back against this stuff, and I definitely commend them for it because... What's happening is really frustrating from an outside perspective, and it must be even more frustrating to see this as someone living in Japan. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.